Hello and welcome back. My name is Pete as a reminder and I'm going to start covering the next section which is going to be talking about networks and connectivity and different communication options. So let's just jump right into it. So as I said the first section is going to be communications. And so actually every computer actually has a network interface card and what this does it actually allows our computers to communicate to one another. Well, not only computers have this, but your tablets and smartphones have these as well. Um, so modems is an example. These are your um, older style as well. They call modem with dial-up. And we even have wireless network interfaces cards um, that, as I said, your tablets and such will have. And basically, network interface cards allow us to modify data and be able to transmit it across the internet. So which is a pretty cool feature to be able to, to do. And then we'll get into connectivity. So connectivity is pretty much the process of being able to share information um, across systems and between different computers. So you can think of like mobile devices actually possess the ability to share um, information. Um, you know, and our mobile devices, again, are our phones and tablets are considered these. So networks are going to be the next section that we're going to be talking about. Um, you know, networks are very popular and widely used within today. So and what our networks allow us to do is actually exchange data between the computer systems. Without networks, we wouldn't be able to do any data exchange between them. So this, is, this has really helped facilitate the popularity of the internet and the use. I mean, Think about you know Facebook. Without networks, we wouldn't have Facebook. And again, the internet is the largest network. Every every system, every network connects to the internet. So the internet is the largest network. And we have smaller networks, such as Leeward Community College has its own network that we are able to use and connect to the internet with. Um, even your house is considered a network. You use this and connect. Um, you know, using your ISP, your internet service provider, you use this to connect to the network. Um, and then the network is, you know, that you're using the ISP is connected to the internet. It makes up the internet. The next section we're going to talk about is cloud computing, which also makes use of the internet. So, and cloud computing, it's becoming a very popular topic as well these days. Um, you don't need to install any software really for it. It's specialized computing. Being, um, a, being part of the University of Hawaii, we actually have access to Google Drive, which actually uses cloud computing. And even Google Documents uses cloud computing. And later on in this course, you will be introduced into um, Google Drive. So, you know, cloud computing, it's kind of the, the new rage in technology and being used all over the place. So you'll become very familiar with this and be introduced to it throughout the course. So, and again, think of it as a service. It's not something you really need to install. It's something that, you know, you're going to be accessing and using. You can use it through your web browser. Recall I mentioned Google Docs. You don't have to install anything to use Google Docs. You can just get into, you know, your web browser, go to, um, you know, gmail.hawaii.edu, log in, and you're going to be able to access um, you know, the Google Cloud apps through there. So let's look at different careers that are a possibility to have with the use of technology. So careers in computing. I mean, if you really think about what aren't computers used in, computers are everywhere. They, they're pretty much anything you can think of that job will require computers. So I'm just going to quickly put them up, um, and then we'll talk about them. So businesses, if you think about with businesses, I mean, they use it to control inventory, the cash registers. You know, when people, even communications, retail, cash registers, checking out, um, inventory control, UPS. I mean, to me, I get shipments of packages, and I'm using the internet and tracking my you know, tracking my package to see where it's coming and when it's going to be delivered to me. As well, within the arts, people are using computers within the arts to, 
create portfolios online to publish things, to create websites, videos, images. You know, we have all these possibilities because of computers, as well as gaming. Look at gaming. I'm, I know most of you are probably, you know, playing video games and having fun, even on your smartphone and tablets. But your PlayStation, your Xbox, these are all video games. And you can get careers with, you know, creating video games, even video game testing. As well, education. You know, we're using computers within this course. Lalima is a piece of um, software that we're using to help with internet. Um, to help with the facilitation of this course. Agriculture as well is used, um, you know, they use this to keep track of crops and harvests and, you know, what they have as well and keep track of animals and what animals have, you know, been treated for what diseases and everything. And even within, you know, doctors and medicine, research is being done using computers to find new cures for, you know, diseases and everything. So, and as you will hear later on, there's even careers within automotive that you can use and, you know, different technology that's used within your cars. Just think of how far cars have come since the 1970s until today. Think of all the technology that is involved. Um, and mostly in the sciences, think of like meteorology, um, you know, all these the sciences, biology, you know, computers are being used to do research and find new things and do experiments. So really, computers are everywhere. We can't really get around not using a computer. So, you know, this course will focus on different careers and everything that we will have within computers. So let's move forward to the next section and actually look at what more specifically we can do within the arts. So as I mentioned, people are creating websites and hosting web pages, doing web development, to put up their entire portfolio that you know they're creating. It's a great way of selling items and being able to make money, um, generate money for yourself without having to, to really pay a lot of money to host an art show. Um, artists are displaying all their work online um, and you can even generate um, art using a computer, which is pretty interesting to do. And think about it, if you generate computer with um, art using a computer, it's easy to resell and you can keep reselling it and making money off of it. So computers are greatly used within the arts. Um, as well, we digitize movement. So you can actually put um, sensors on someone and actually digitize them. They actually, you know, you can do this with dancing and as well, people will do this with sports. So you will actually see some video games where it's lifelike movements and it's because they've put sensors on the athlete and actually capture their movements. Um, we can create music using the computer. Um, Apple has GarageBand, think about GarageBand, you can create music with that and everything. So there are other apps, um, applications that we can use as well to create music, but you know, GarageBand is one of them that we can use to create music. Next, we're gonna look at um, another section of biomedical implants. And these are um, devices that you know, use technology and help provide us with a better life, such as um, you can actually get heart valve replacements as well that are um, biomedical. Um, pacemakers, if you think about a pacemaker, it helps keep the rhythm of your heart stable. And you know, this is an electronic device. Um, and here you can look at this um, hyperlink that's provided and you can actually read about what they're doing with biomedical implants to actually help people hear, heal faster after operations and surgeries. And as well, you could get contact lenses, which are a um, biomedical implant and help us with our vision to improve our sight and uh, dental implants we can have as well. So with the sciences, um, you know, as I mentioned, we can use computers with the science. So astronomy is another popular thing that we can use telescopes to actually track new stars, find new stars, see where um, meteoroids and everything are and track them to use them. And we using this with, you know, computers all use all of it um, to do. We, and here's some new information as well with black holes. And, you know, you can read this, this hyperlink as well. And it will give you information about what researchers are doing with black holes to, you know, find them and discover them and study them. And as I mentioned, meteorology um, uses them. And, they use it for predicting, you know, different weather. So if you think about 
the meteorology and everything. They're using this to predict weather. They're doing tsunami predictions. Even recently we had hurricanes that were threatening the islands. And they're using computers to track and kind of look at data and figure out what path are these going to take to see if they're going to affect us. And they tell us, they give us these warnings. So, you know, computers are actually helping us greatly to, you know, forewarn us about natural disasters and everything. And next, we're going to look at um, computers in retail and business. So a lot of businesses are using computers for data mining, trying to find trends and common occurrences that are used throughout um, to better market products and everything. They track what customers are buying and, you know, so they know, okay, this is a hot item. Let's keep stocking it, maybe put it on sale. Um, you know, businesses are using computers to keep track of inventory and even communications. You know, it's everything is done using computers nowadays. And I've mentioned several different ways, you know, earlier that businesses and retail use it. So we'll kind of move forward and finish up talking about tracking. Tracking um, uses GPS and they use this to kind of, you know, figure out where things are. You can use this with your packages and see where they are, even vehicles and, and um, where they're, they are exactly located, as well as barcodes. So you can track things using barcodes as inventory and everything. So, you know, there's different ways and different things we have to worry about. So thank you and, um, you know, we'll see you soon.